I remember just breaking down one day being like, I don't think I can do this. It always seemed like I had hockey around me and everybody was there for me that day. But that means I should enjoy life twice as much because she didn't get to enjoy it. Do it for the people that aren't here anymore and do it for the people that you love because they're going to want you to live your life to the absolute fullest. So my name is Jess Hurst. I am from a little place called Fording Bridge in the New Forest, which is near Bournemouth. And I play for Cardiff Met Hockey Club. I describe myself as competitive, um, on and off the pitch, I think, in all walks of life. I'm a screen, which is a central midfield position. I'm quite defensive. However, if you ask any of my coaches, I ask them every single week to go up front because I want to score goals. <laughs> so I'm goal hungry as well. So I've coached Jess for the last five years. Um, so coached her here in a, through a three-year undergraduate course, and then she stayed on for a two-year master's course, uh, which I've yeah, coached her throughout there. So yeah, five years, that's time flies. So Jess was joining us as a first year university student. We had a call with her, I think myself, Luke, the director of hockey, um, and Jess. And yeah, first impressions, uh, really charismatic, confident, um, friendly, smiley. Uh, yeah, really nice girl, but like had a bit about her as well, considering like coming as sort of an 18, 19 year old, I think she had a gap year, which is something we often see, you know, that extra year of been a bit more worldly wide but yeah generally you know really friendly girl switched on um, fairly quietly confident I think. Yeah I remember turning up and meeting Alf and Luke and they were lovely and there was also like four or five of us freshers that were starting that year and we instantly became like best friends and even now like we just see each other all the time we love each other and yeah it was definitely the, the hockey family that brought us together so it was lovely. So I actually started playing hockey by accident. I used to like try out all sorts of different sports and I was waiting behind after class like one day because my mum was a teacher at my school and one of the older girls came in and was like, please, like, we need a player. Can you come onto the pitch? And I was like, oh yeah, I'll give it a go. And honestly, like instantly fell in love with it. I got man of the match, scored a hat-trick first ever got, like, game and yeah, from there it just took off really and I just like instantly was like, mom, please can I join a hockey club? And yeah, so she took me to Salisbury and yeah, ever since then, played it. <laughs> I think like as soon as I came off the pitch, you could tell like I was just like, oh, I love this sport. I love how like fast paced it is. I love how, okay, it's like not necessarily a contact sport, but there's that element of like fight in it. You can be quite physical. I feel like with hockey, there's like a risk on the pitch as well. Like you might get hurt, but it's like worth putting it, like leaving it all out there and just like, playing your game really. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I actually never even thought about Cardiff Met initially. Um, I actually had Luke Hawker, who again, probably one of my other main hockey inspirations. He, um, yeah, he actually just reached out to me, invited me along to pre-season and I ended up coming along and I just instantly fell in love with it. Like the whole vibe of the university side, the whole vibe of the club side was amazing. And I just thought, yeah, this is, this is the university for me. And, here I am, five years later, but yeah, no. Who would you say is your biggest role model at Cardiff Met? Um, I think it's got to be Hawks. Yeah, Luke Hawker. He's going to get a really big head from me saying this. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, I've been so fortunate to have him as a coach. Like, he's an amazing coach. He's the loveliest person as well, and he also... Like, he's an international hockey player. Like, you could, it's, it's very rare to be able to have, like, that sort of person support you the whole way through uni. And to be honest, like, I don't think I'd be where I am today without him. Like, he supported me through the highs and the real lows of uni. And I'm pretty sure, like, he's the main reason I've got a degree. So, yeah, big thanks to Luke Hawker. How long do you know me? Oh, it's Would not I looking... look after you? No. <laughs> There is running. I'll explain the situation. I'd say the biggest difference between like uni and club hockey, I think when you're younger and you play club hockey, you go to training, you go to matches, but then you go home and you're just living your normal life. But when you're at uni hockey, you play hockey with these people, but you also like 
eat with these people, you live with these people, you go out with these people. Everyone's in the same boat. You're, you've gone from having the comfort of your own home to being in a brand new city with a load of new people. And I think the university hockey side of things makes you like a lot closer as a team. Go, let's keep going. Good effort team, let's go, let's go. What's the biggest challenge that you've faced in your life? <sighs> okay. Um, yeah. So two years ago, I lost my mum to breast cancer. Um, it was right at the end of my third year of uni. Um, yeah, I found out that she had cancer when I was in sick form and she went through lots of chemo, radiotherapy, and she went into remission and obviously we were ecstatic. Um, but yeah, then it, it was in my second year of uni. I knew that there'd been like some problems and mum was a bit poorly um, and she'd had some hospital appointments and stuff. But no, I like vividly remember the phone call. So I, um, I played a hockey match and I remember I was like over the moon, like I'd got mad at the match, we'd won, it was such a great game. And I came off the pitch and I always called mum and dad like after every game because I was just like, I, they loved hearing about my hockey. So I like picked up the phone to tell them we'd won and I, like, I didn't even let them speak. I was just like, oh my God, like I've won. Like I was played so well, blah, blah, blah. And I could tell by like dad's voice, dad was like, Jess, we've got something to tell you. Like, are you with someone? Like, is someone with you? And thankfully I had one of my friends, Ellie, with me, who was basically like my sister at uni. And yeah, he basically said, look, like mum's, Cancer's come back and this time it's not treatable, which was just the hardest moment ever. Like I felt like everything was just like went to shit <laughs> in like two seconds. I was, again, it always seemed like I had hockey around me and they like everybody was there for me that day and everyone was stood by me and they like I got upset and they'd look after me. But yeah, trying to manage that and mum being so poorly during my like second third year of uni having to manage my uni work writing a dissertation completing third year playing hockey that was that was hard and trying to manage I think one of the hardest things was like going home to like spend as much time as I could with mum whilst also trying to live my life the way mum wants me to because my mum wanted me to throw everything into uni and throw everything into hockey so trying to find that balance was tough for sure I don't know if it was sort of straight after it was more like while whilst her mum's condition was deteriorating I think just noticed Jess becoming a bit more grown up really I, you know I think any kind of any kind of loss or any kind of like traumatic event anything like that is uh, yeah is going to change you but I think yeah, she grew up quite a lot in that sort of year leading up to and sort of afterwards as well. Cause, um, yeah, as a person, just became a lot more mature and quite aware of the group around her as well. And yeah, I had a lot more conversations with her as well, related not just to herself, but to other people, like how other people were doing. Like probably more conversations with her around, yeah, people's condition, not related to hockey, if you like, their sort of personal circumstances. So. Yeah, I think that's probably the main changes I saw in Jess. Yeah, I'd love, to, I'd do anything to be able to go for drinks with my mum and just be able to get her advice. Like, there's so many things, oh my God, that I need her advice with. And my dad and brother are amazing, but it's not my mum. Um, oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I miss her every day, a lot. Yeah, hockey being a team sport is super helpful um, because you're always going to have someone to turn to and if you don't have someone to turn to you then you've got hockey itself and it's such a good outlet for any sort of emotion. Um, it's super distracting. I mean, you can't you can't switch off for a second, really. Like, there's always so much going on, um, and I think 
yeah, just being able to surround yourself with like-minded people who are also super competitive. Everyone's looking towards the same goal, but there's no real feeling like a team working together to achieve a certain goal. So yeah, um, I think just like the sheer number of people that care about you in a society like Cardiff Met Hockey Club. Um, yeah, like an, I know that, I mean, like I mentioned Hawks, like Hawks and Alf were amazing, both of them. Like there were times when with some of the stuff going on, I might play up a little bit or wouldn't turn up to training or I don't know, not be like, like forget things, not prepare myself for things. Yeah, maybe not like the ideal player at some times, but <laughs> they were so supportive and like I think they recognised that because of everything going on at home, they knew that I needed a structure and they <laughs> they didn't drop me even though sometimes maybe they should like and they kept me there and they kept me training and they kept me distracted and they kept me focused and they were just fantastic. And then I mean just the other players, like my teammates like the rest of like even the boys at the rest of society there are some people and like they know who they are were there for me like through some of the toughest things everyone was so supportive and i know that honestly like a couple of days before my mum went she said she was like that i know i'm going but i know you're going to be all right because you've got all the hockey lot and she genuinely meant that and she genuinely believed that and yeah i think she was almost like okay she's got a support network around her yeah, I love everyone in hockey. They've definitely kept me going through all of this. On top of that, I'd say, yeah, I mean, my mum was amazing. She literally encouraged me to do whatever makes me happy. And when she found out hockey made me happy, she pushed me towards that. And she took me to like every training session, every like trial, every competition, every match. She was on the sideline in the coldest of weather, like sideways rain, and she'd be there like with an umbrella and like a little Mac on, like cheering for me. No, she was, she was amazing. She was so good to have around. Like I say, she was my biggest supporter in everything. Yeah, anytime it got tough, I remember a, like a real tough moment was when I was writing my dissertation towards the end of my third year. And to put this into perspective, my mum died like a, a week after I handed in my dissertation. So when it was really tough and it was like towards the deadline and I was super stressed, my mum was also really poorly. And I remember just breaking down one day being like, I don't think I can do this. Like I don't, I can't get my head into this. I, just, I will not have enough time. Like I, how am I supposed to sit here and write this when all this is going on? And poor, my poor mum, even in like the toughest, like she must've been in so much pain and so poorly, but she managed to come to my room and she sat me down and she said, look, Get, come and get into bed like we'll talk about this and she helped me set out a plan a structure for my day like for like the whole like two weeks I had left until my deadline and she was like right we're gonna get up early in the morning you can do this and she was the one who like supported me through everything and like it's mental to me because she must have been in so much pain um but she honestly she was so positive like throughout everything and it just boosted me 100% it's just such a like reflection on my mum's character and I think like I aspire to be like her I aspire to like like my mum used to walk into a room and the whole room would light up and I think I want to give off that positive energy like I want to I don't want to be sad all the time or I don't want to be like negative I want to go in and like come on guys let's have a good day and have that sort of effect because my mum was so loved and yeah I definitely want to be like that <laughs> I don't know if it's just hockey or like if you find something that you genuinely enjoy in life and you just throw yourself into it and you surround yourself with people who also enjoy it like that is like probably top tip for like distracting yourself and staying happy in really rubbish times. When it comes to loss obviously everyone's going to cope with it in different ways but I'd say from someone who's experienced loss it really like hits home how short life is and like I say like if you find something that you actually love doing just do it 
Like, there's there's no point like, being upset or like moping around when you can genuinely throw yourself into something you really enjoy. And like, I know that, okay, my mum's not here anymore, but that means I should enjoy life twice as much because she didn't get to enjoy it. So I think if, if there's one thing I'd say is do it for the people that aren't here anymore and do it for the people that you love because they're gonna want you to live your life to the absolute fullest.